The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the September 28th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you, when you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance. That life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, go ahead and send me an email. Just like David and John here have, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading at a downside. The Dow off by 555 points. The S&P 89. The NASDAQ 100, 418. Russell's off 42. Semi's down 121. Tranny's 125. New York Stock Exchange is down 272. The NASDAQ composite off 400 points, about 2 and 7 tenths percent to the uh, downside. Spot politics is up by 26% right now. She's trading out at 2376. You know to be watching for a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. You would do that in combination with trying to identify some type of bottom in the intraday charts for the ES mini, uh, preferably the 30 minute time frame chart. But you got to look at a couple different time frames out there. The XAU is off 20 cents, only a one uh, two tenths of a percent, uh, while we've got gold down uh, about one percent nearly, eight, eight tenths, nine 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 tenths, 15 bucks trading out at 1736. Silver down 21 cents. Both uh, well, silver's rejected a level of support and gold right now is testing a key level of support lights we crude up 27 pennies she's trading at 7056 natural gas up seven cents trade down at 577 and the 30-year treasure off one full point and eight ticks trade down at 159.14 dollar wise the leader to the upside is fact set research up 16 bucks four and a half percent and dava plc is up nine bucks or seven percent Thor Industries up nine, close to nine. I'm just rounding here, 7.8%. Uh, United Natural Foods up 21. To the downside is Google up 111 bucks, about 4%. Amazon 105, 3%. Mercado Libre 92, 82. That's four and a half percent. Shopify 78, five and a half percent. And Chipotle down three percent, 63 buckaroni. So let's do this here. Um, let's start by taking a look at general markets. Well, David and John wrote in about. Uh, Moderna, mRNA is a ticker symbol. So we'll certainly take a look at that. But let's just begin by uh, stepping back for a moment. Let's take a look at the markets. What are they communicating to us? So the first thing is, as we take a look at, this is simply a weekly time frame chart. You've got the NASDAQ in the upper left, the S&P, you know, the ES mini in the upper right, the Dow lower left, the Russell 2000 is in the lower right. Now it's a weekly time frame. What we can see right now is the NQ is testing that key level of support. That is the bottom of its weekly profile, 14802. The NQ will need to close below that level on Friday, not on Tuesday, but on Friday to confirm some type of change in trend. If we take a look at the ES Mini next to it, how do we come up with developing that theory? Well, all we have to do is take a look at, especially since, excuse me, especially since the move off of the 2020 bottom, any type of retracements have found support at the bottom of that weekly profile. Pearson it doesn't do it. It's got to be a close. So right now, the ES Mini is trading above the top of that profile. So for the S&P 500, there is no change in trend signal. A close below 43.12.40, 43.12, we'll just simply call it, uh, on Friday, different message. In the case of the Dow, where did my data box go? Well, that's interesting. 
Let's see if Stevie can find it, or is it just uh, there? We go. So what's uh, what's the deal here? What's the deal, Shamil? Oh, there we go. It's pulled over. Sorry about that, folks. Just a little technical glitch here. So the Dow Equity Future contract, the key level there is 34,276. You're at 34,179 as we speak right now. And the Russell 2000 is like, hey, I don't know what you guys are doing back there. Now, with regard to what the guys are doing, the guys and gals out here, first, we're in a consolidating market. Cons here are the consolidations. You can see the consolidation, the NQ, the ES, meaning the same type of chart that we looked at, but just simply clearly articulating and identifying the consolidation patterns that we're in. So we want to certainly keep an eye on the NQ because it could be the first one instrument to indicate a break of that consolidation level out there. Consolidating markets, that's what we are in. They are difficult to trade. They offer uh, opportunities for both buyers and sellers, especially intraday. What else should we look at? Mm, is there anything else of really of significance out here? I venture to say, no, not necessarily. I, well, let's go back and, and restate or re-show you or simply show you the chart for the spot volatility. The blue lines or the blue arrows, they represent those one day rates of change above plus 10%. So the key here to this pattern, let me move this off one of my screens. Let me get that over here. And then let me get this set up to a uh, move over to the intraday time period. So give me a moment here. Uh, equity future chart. You know, I probably should have just, oh, well, too late. Uh, not really too late. So let me just switch screens here. And what we're really looking for, and it doesn't have to be at the end of the day. It can start intraday. Um, I know it could start at 115, could really start at 130 out here. But here's what we know. So we're taking a look at the four equity future charts. So this is what you want to be taking a look at, certainly come this evening, end of the day out here. That's if the market finishes poorly. We don't know if it will or it won't. Don't have any indications that it won't at this stage here. But what you're looking for, specifically in the four equity future contract, but with regard to the spot volatility index trade out there, you're really focused on the ES mini. So I'm just going to open up the ES mini right now. And in fact, what I can do, or I should be able to do, is go back to that last, uh, to, to, to give me a moment here, if you would. I'm on a different screen than the one you're, you're looking at. And so the ES Mini, that was on the trading day of September 20th. Let me see if I get back to September 20th. Oh, I can. There we go. So let's uh, let's pull this. So I just want to show you, and the ideal pattern would be a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom, but any, any type of bottom, you know, an A to B equals CD, a... Uh, a uh, TD9 count, but what you're looking for, and if I could show you the, the each of these four equity futures charts, going back to, in this case here, the actual bottom came in at uh, 2.30, uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, that was on September 20th. So what you're really looking for, you're looking for both this type of pattern, again, preferably the Rhodes Momentum Indicator uh, signal, uh, and then a bullish reversal candle, and then a close above that oscillator and change line. And that would be your signal of some type of rally. Now, some type of rally, we'd have to go back and figure out where resistance levels are or price targets. So now let's just fast forward. We don't have that pattern as we speak right now. We do have bar number eight of a TD9 count that is forming. We won't get that con confirmation until we close out the show at 2 p.m. But the lower low could take place between 2 and 2.30 as well on that pattern. But certainly that is something to look at. Um, and you're looking for that, quite frankly, on all four equity future contracts at the same time. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll come back. We'll take a look at this and the other patterns that are present in the NQ, the Russell 2000, and the Dow. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, right, uh, Mr. Bill, you're right on that uh, answer out there. Thank you. Uh, so we're taking a look at the four equity future contracts. These are the 30-minute time frame charts. So we can see here some consistency with regard to bottom signals. Each of these are in bar number eight of a TD9 count. We know that uh, lows or bottoms in this pattern can form on bars eight, nine. Now, you got to form bar number nine. Bar, bar number nine has to be a close below bar number five out there. So that's the first thing, and uh, we should have a feel for it as we get off the year. Hopefully, I don't know what we'll be doing, but we'll try to peek in on uh, these charts here. So remember, in order for the TD9 count pattern to form out here, it's not this bar that's important, but it's going to be the one between 130 and 2. And so those closes need to be below the close of bar number 5. Otherwise, those patterns get negated. Now, in the case of the NQ, let's say that it doesn't do that. It already has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that is triggered, so that would be its valid bottom. It may... Uh, approved to be both. But the question I ask as I was looking at these charts here uh, during the uh, break, and I asked this inside the Tiger's Den, is what price level does the NQ need to close above to suggest to us that it's more than just a dead cat bounce on the 30 minute time frame chart? Mr. Bill came back and his answer and his response, and it was accurate, was 14,870 approximately. Well, 14,868.80, and that's what he was looking at, was the top of the profile. The reason that that is so important, again, we're just looking for patterns. We're trying to understand where buyers and sellers are positioned and the level of strength or weakness that they have. Well, in the case of the NQ, as an example, let me get my uh, crosshair out here. Uh, at uh, 6.30 this morning, we had bar number nine form of a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And if we take a look at it, price just moves sideways out there. There was a new profile that formed at 8 a.m. and uh, still had that valid bottom. Where did price run into resistance? The very top of that profile. So that says to us, not just does price need to close above the oscillator and change line, but inside the NQ, the level to be watching. Now, these profiles may change. So if you're looking at them at 320, I won't be able to tell you what they are, whether they've changed. But if price is trading above 14869, 148, uh, 70 out there, a close above it, not trading above, but a close above it on a 30-minute basis. That then says, okay, rally on. 
uh, at least relief rally, and that could take price up to the 15,191 level. Inside the ES Mini, we had really a similar type setup. We got to wave number seven, that's letter G, courtesy of Basil Chapman out there. Again, a new profile formed at eight o'clock, where the price ran in, run into resistance, the top of that profile. Now, in this case here for the ES Mini, we don't have a profile that price is trading into. So does price need to close about 4406 before you would get a long trade? No, what I would do is I would put this together with the NQ out there. It has a TD9 count bottom potential, but again, that needs to see a close below. Um, 43.51 on that 1.30 to 2 p.m. bar that would form out here. Uh, so with regard to being able to interpret what the 30-minute uh, time frame charts are communicating to us, I believe the NQ is the one to really keep an eye on with regard to whether it's just a counter trend move, which would then run into resistance at the 14.870 level, or a close above that says, okay, we're ready to rally on and at least have a larger, at a minimum, relief rally. Now, it could be more than re relief rally because we're near the bottom of those weekly profiles inside the NQ and the Dow Equity Future Contract. So I hope that helps you out with regard to what to be looking for and anticipating. And part of this is just assuming at this stage here that you'll see a spot volatility with a one-day rate of change above plus 10%. That may not be the case when it comes to the 4 p.m. hour. So that's one of the things that you would look for. Now, we had a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, one inside the Tigers then was to go take a look at the uh, GDX. That was for SNP. And uh, so let's go take a look at, let me do this here. Give me a moment to get over to some charts. Let's change the uh, screen that uh, we're sharing together. And let's just change it to my black background chart screen, and I'll pull over the chart. Okay, so in the case of the GDX, we'll pull this over here. And as we take a look at it, we're going to see that today is going to become bar number nine. So this is going to be a completed TD9 count. We also see that the price is getting stretched, uh, generating that road momentum indicator signal out here. Tomorrow can be the low of the pattern. So you could see SMP, you could see a lower low tomorrow, and the pattern would still be validated. Now, I don't know if we'll see a lower low tomorrow, but what the lowest low of today's low or tomorrow's low would be the key level. Any price below whatever the low of that pattern is would then negate this signal out here. But in the case of the GDX, you do have a uh, TD9 count pattern that is going to set up as we speak today. I'll pull over the XAU. Uh, you'll see symmetry here. We don't always see symmetry, but we certainly see symmetry today with regard to its patterns. Here we can see prices also moving lower, doing less relative energy. You've got a, a TD9 count bottom that is uh, going to form today. Not likely will the XAU close above the low of bar number five, which is uh, not the low, but the close, which is 122.70. So, what do you need to see in the XAU to confirm a bottom out here? Well, I would say close above the oscillator and change line would go a long way to supporting that TD9 count bottom pattern. So SNP in the Tiger's Den, I hope that helps you out with regard to the GDX and the XAU. If there's anything else that you need, just please let me know. Let's go to our next question. Uh, this one coming in from uh, two of our folks uh, via email. Uh, let me get to theirs. One is from John O and the other from David H. David says, do you think Myrna Moderna will head below the 50-day exponential moving average by 10.5? So we've got, let me see here. Let me get to our three-panel chart. There are three time frames. That's the Qs. Let me move this over here a little bit easier. Let's get out of the Qs and get into MRNA Moderna out here. See what kind of signals we've got. And while that is happening, uh, give me a moment to find my other set of charts that I can pull over momentarily. Okay, so there's really, we've got a bull and a bear out here. So let me read both their questions. Uh, this is from John in Denver. John, uh, we'll just call you John Denver. How about that? I like that. John says, in general, uh, you saw massive put options to drive Myrna down to 375. You got within one point of that, or it got within one point, and you bought a small position at 377. Do you see any possible movement back up to the 400 area? And the answer there is yes. So I'll just simply answer that immediately while we're taking a look at that. And the answer, the reason why I would say yes, that that is a possibility, John, is Moderna is trading with inside a slightly bullish structured profile. Price got down towards the bottom of that profile, got into, because it's bullish structured profile, the support level would be between 373 and the center of that profile, which is 388. 
So in essence, it's done that. It's tested that. Resistance is 408.70. I don't have any indication. So your question was, is, do I see any possibility of this moving back up to 400? Hey, if you can't bust them down, <clears throat> price will try to bust them up. So the answer uh, there is yes. <clears throat> if you see a close, or certainly two consecutive closes, below 373, uh, that suggests lower price. And in this case here, lower price would be 355.78. That's looking at our black background charts. Now, let me take a look at David's question because I think David is uh, the bear out here. Hey, Steve, do you think Moderna will head below the 50-day EMA? Now, I don't know where the 50-day EMA is on this. And you say by October 15. But the answer to your question, wherever that is, um, and I don't want to, to, I don't want to take the time to put that tool on the uh, chart out here. I don't think that is important at this stage. We know that it's below where price is trading. And so David, uh, both David and John, in order for that to happen, you need to see a close below 373. Uh, so um, that's, uh, the, uh, that's our take on Moderna at 126 in the afternoon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in about three and a half minutes. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I take a look at this little rocket ship, United Natural Foods. Uh, don't know what they cured, but uh, 
big, huge, wide-ranging bar, trading from about 39 to 46 bucks out here. Uh, that puts price above its daily, weekly, and monthly profiles at this stage. So that is in breakout mode. This is for Pat inside the uh, YouTube channel. So I don't know what Pat's question is. Um, asking the move for a new to asking the move for UNFI. Uh, so I, I, again, I don't really know the clarity of be behind that. But if your question is where is this thing headed to, um, that's a great question. Uh, do I have the answer to that? I only got the daily and the weekly. So on the daily and weekly charts, there's no signal of any kind of a uh, topping pattern as we speak today. Uh, so let me come back to this bigger picture out here and see if we can give you any kind of assistance as to where price might be headed to. So um, I'd have to say, I'm just going to pull this back here. The logical outcome is that price is making its way up into this $50 area at $46.41. So the prior swing points where price turned down, this look at a monthly time frame chart was in July of 2016, and that was at the price of about $52.18. Then back in uh, December of 2017, it was $52.69. So, Pat, I don't have anything here to suggest that price is not going to do that same thing. Now, if it can clear that, then United Natural Foods can get all the way back into, and this is over time, obviously. This is a monthly chart that we're taking a look at, the right-hand panel back to its 2015 highs in the $83 area. But a uh, big move inside of uh, United Natural Foods, a uh, big volume behind that move as well out there. So, Pat, thanks for listening in on the uh, YouTube channel, and I hope that that uh, helps. Uh, via the uh, via email, I think we've got a request out here. We do. This is coming in from Tim. And uh, Tim M says he's long square. SQ is the uh, ticker symbol out here. So I'm long square, wondering where support is for the daily and weekly time frames. Should I stay or should I go? Well, support from a profile standpoint, that's what we'll first to respond to out here, Tim, on the daily basis at 244.45. That's the bottom of its profile. However, what I can see by just taking a quick peek to the left is on the trading day of March, uh, March of September 13th, I believe that was Friday the 13th. I don't know if it was or not, but September the 13th, and it probably wasn't Friday the 13th. But on September 13th, that was a hammer candle. So your real support level is going to be 237.91. If price closes below that, then we probably have an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, at 235.17, that's the top of its weekly profile. So what I suggest that you jettison this position right now. I don't know where you're long from, so it's hard for me to say, but I would wait. Now, price is pulling back in the hammer candle with uh, more volume. That had 7.8 million shares. You're already at 7.1 million shares. Nonetheless, the hammer candle is an important candle to be paying attention to from a support level because the expression is if you're close below the bottom of a hammer candle, if you're long, you are wrong. No charts. You don't see the charts, Mr. Bill? Right now, you should see square. It's a white background chart out there. Tell me you see it, please. I'm just taking a swig here. Anybody see the charts, the white background chart? Nada. Oh, my goodness. Hey, guys in the uh, production room, um, hopefully you're listening in. Can you, you see charts, S&P? Uh, we've got two that say yes, three that say yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Bill. I'm going to have to keep uh, rolling around here. Maybe check out Tiger TV. Uh, so we're taking a look at Square. You can see that hammer. Can There's a white background charts out there. And uh, uh, so that's the real key level. Now, if price closed below that, I'd mention an A to B equals C to the downside, where Square would be targeting would be 209.80. That is its TD9 breakout level. That's coming from the daily chart. The weekly chart out here, as we populate it, uh, this uh, formed a TD9 count top. And price basically has just been consolidated. It's above the top of its weekly profile, but below its oscillator and change line. It really is just a, a consolidation pattern out there. So no reason to really jettison your position. The monthly time frame chart, as long as price holds the green oscillator and change line, which is where it's trading right now, that would indicate there's no reason to jettison the position out there, and that is in square. So watch the bottom of that hammer candle. That's going to be your key low. And again, that's at 237.91. So, Tim, thanks for writing in. I hope that helps you out. The next question coming in from Rose. And Rose from New York, uh, she called but uh, couldn't stay on the phone. That's okay. We'll go ahead and take a look at what she was interested in. And that is ticker symbol CCXI. That is Chemocentrics. It's trading out at 1979. Man, what an ugly looking chart on the trading day of um, September, uh, May the 4th out there. And it wasn't much better for the next couple of days because this thing fell from grace. 48 bucks, got down to a low. This is in three days. 48, 
down to 955. That is a gigantic move. Well, that's what it did in the past. We don't want to be a prisoner of our past, do we? Well, if we take a look at what this is doing on a daily basis, above the, above the top of the daily profile, above the top of the weekly profile, and approaching the top of the monthly profile, and that's at 2168. So, Rose, I don't know what you were looking for out there. Um, but uh, 2168 is the next price target to the upside unless we see some kind of um, topping signal. So let's pull over uh, some of the other charts out here. Let's look at the daily time frame chart. So a nice move, but what is that move showing us? Well, that move shows us that today is going to become bar number nine of its TD9 count. The last bar number nine of the TD9 count, that formed out here on September 1st. What did that do? Rose, that took uh, price all the way back to support. That was the bottom of its profile, and that was on September 13th, and that it has moved up since then. And since then, you now are at bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says that today or tomorrow could be the high. Uh, and if we do see that that is the case, what you should expect and anticipate is that price will move back and test that green oscillator and change line. It's currently printed at 1771. That is not the level where price would test it. Uh, you know, we just simply have to monitor that. So you do on a daily basis have the potential for a pullback. If you're looking to get in on this, wait for that pullback and look at that 1771-ish type area. On a weekly chart, I don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. I'll just go to a 30-minute time frame chart. We're in wave number seven. That's letter G. Uh, you do have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that's been confirmed. But what has not occurred is we have not seen price close below that green oscillator and change line. And that's really important. So this is really a neutral signal on its 30-minute uh, time frame. So wait. Uh, if you are in this position, just anticipate a short-term top. If you're looking to get in, Rose, uh, wait to see how this TD9 count pattern plays out and pulls back to support. And again, that first level is around the 1771 area. So thanks so much for calling in. Much appreciated. Another question that has popped up here, this is from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at Happy Taco Tuesday. Hey, back at you. Uh, please uh, work an ABC down on the GDX monthly chart. Sorry about that. A little thirsty. Had to take a little swig. Of water. That's a technical term that uh, we like to use around here. Oh, look at what Hector is looking at. So Hector is saying, hey, you know what, Stevie? Price right now is trading below a swing point on a monthly basis. What would that, if that is an A to B equal CD to the downside? And the swing point is from March. Let me get my data box out here. From March, would had volume of 499 million shares. You're at the 28th and you are at 437. So what does a GDX do on a daily basis on average? Just kind of curious. Uh, you did 16 million yesterday, 14 million the day before, 28, 26. So let's say it could do about 50 million shares. Let's come back to the weekly chart out here. So if we add 50 million shares to where we're at from a, oh, that's the weekly chart. You wanted the monthly. Hold on a minute here. Uh, we had 500 million, 50 Still going to be light in the loafers on a volume standpoint. But nonetheless, Hector, when you get back from this break, we're going to draw in that A to B equals CD to the downside because you asked for it. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we're taking a look at the monthly time frame chart for the GDX, uh, courtesy of Hector and Patty. And Hector says, hey, could you draw in an A to B equals CD, which we've drawn in right now. The A point is going to be up at 45.78, the high of August 2020. The low is going to be the B point. That's March of 2021. That's at 30.64. And a retracement for a couple of months into May of 2021. And that's up at the uh, 40.13 level. That gives you a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to downside Hector. Price projection of 24.99. Now, if that is going to happen, then what you should see, let's come back out here. We should see a TD nine count bottom form today, a TD nine count form. We don't know whether it's a TD nine count bottom just yet because a lower low could take place tomorrow. So Hector, if the A to B equals CD to the downside is going to take place on the monthly time frame chart, then you need to see this TD9 account pattern fail. So I would say that would be a clue for you to take a look at. So more to come, you know, probably on Thursday. We'll have a better feel on Thursday when we take a look at what the uh, GDX is doing because it's got that valid potential for a valid bottoming pattern out there. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we would want to pay attention to is what's going on inside of gold, U.S. dollar, and silver out there because they're certainly going to affect the miners. So we'll start from the right to the left. The right is the U.S. dollar index. And we'll spend a little bit more time, if we have the time today, taking a look at the U.S. dollar index because it's really the great British pound and the uh, yen that are putting the strength inside of the U.S. dollar. So we want to understand if those things are at support levels or resistance levels, depending on how we're taking a look at the chart. But right now, the U.S. dollar index is up at its key resistance point. That's at the 93.73 level or 93.74. Will that hold? I don't know. Step back to the left. Take a look at the chart for silver. Silver yesterday confirmed a rose momentum indicator bottom. It is not shown on this chart out here, so you have to trust me on that, but I would have no reason to lie. And silver tested and rejected the support level of 2209. What silver has not done is got back inside any kind of profile. So... If there's going to be a move to the downside, silver will not get back above the 2277 level. That's the bottom of its weekly profile. If we take a look at gold, gold right now is threatening to negate its Gartley buy pattern. Its Gartley buy pattern formed on the trading day of September the 20th. It did that with a key reversal bar. That sets up your support level of 1742.30. If gold closes above that today, and again, you looked at a monthly chart. We looked at a monthly chart in the GDX. Now we're looking at daily time frames. You know, two type, types of different type signals out here. But nonetheless, on a short-term basis, these are levels that price needs to close below, 2209 in silver and 1742 in uh, gold, in order to say or suggest, and the U.S. dollar probably needs to close above 9373, to really suggest that the uh, 
uh, the move to the downside is in place out here. But the interesting thing is, what is interesting? I don't know what the interesting thing is. There's a question in uh, in the Tigers and GDX reaching 0.618 off the September low ABC. Could that be in play too? Absolutely. It most certainly can. Um, and so I have to go back to the GDX chart, which we will as we do this live. And uh, so the GDX, you're saying off the September low. So let's come out here. You, I imagine you're looking at a daily time frame out here no september low where the heck am i it reaching 0.618 september 2018 uh, okay now you're not looking at a daily time frame so we come back here so us uh, let me uh, get to that uh, so here's what you're you're talking about the september low why didn't you use the march low oh that's 2020 oh you're really going back uh okay uh so what you're looking at i just pulled back so that's the september no, I got to January 2016. Uh, you're, you're, uh, so I, I wouldn't be using that September low, Dan. So Dan in Boston, the reason why I wouldn't use that as September 2018 is because you have a lower low in March of 2020. So really, I think the appropriate, not, not that it's going to be a significant difference here, but it would be that I would use the lower of the lows that are out there to um, you know come up with a retracement uh, level. So here's the retracement from that low that I'm referring to back in March of 2020 up to the high in August of 2020. And the 0.618 level is 27.65. So yeah, that could be an area where we would see some type of support out there. But what we have going on right now that's cool is we have some daily bottoming signals out there. And so with those daily bottoming, actually, I don't think I caught it exactly right, but the, it was about that area out there. And that is right now because of the TD9 count pattern that is forming in the GDX, you know, by tomorrow we may have more information, but certainly by Thursday, we'll have really a, uh, a fairly decent clue as to what the GDX is doing out there. Now, there are several instruments inside the GDX that are also you can't get to a GDX bottoming signal TD9 count pattern without some of the instruments with inside the GDX also showing those types of potential bottom signals. So what you really want to do as an example, and this is really for only for Hector's eyes, just kidding. But for example, Newmont Mining is the number one weighted equity inside of the GDX. As we take a look at Newmont Mining, what do we see out here? Well, the last two days were doji candles. So that becomes pretty easy for a bullish reversal signal to form. We've got that. You've got a bullish engulfing candle. It's engulfing the last three trading sessions. Uh, will this become bar number nine? This only becomes bar number nine today inside of Newmont Mining if price closes below 54.65 and you're at 54.59 right now. But it doesn't matter. You would have a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal out there. So the number one equity Inside of the GDX says, uh, I'm getting ready to bottom, but price has to take out resistance. That would be 55.71 to say it's a bottom of significance. So that was the first instrument. If we take a look at the uh, Rand Gold out here, or Barrick Gold, G-O-L-D is the ticker symbol, uh, do we have a bottoming pattern? Uh, we don't just yet. Uh, but it could generate a bearish, a bullish engulfing candle today. And that would then go ahead and confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Price would need to close above 1822 in this instance to suggest that there is a bottom. So those are your two uh, top weightings. Let's go to the third one out here, Hector. And as we take a look at the third one, you take a look at Franco Nevada. And what is Franco Nevada doing? Well, today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. That TD9 count is occurring above TD9 breakout support at 122.53. So there is some real potential for the mining equities to form some type of uh, bottom. Now, not each of the holdings inside of the mining sector show those same kind of patterns out there, but certainly the top three do. And it's a reason for us to pay attention out there. So hopefully, um, and really, these equities have held up well, considering you've got gold uh, back 16 bucks right now and the strength in the U.S. dollar. So I don't know if that is hmm, something to think about or if it's just a fake out. But uh, we're going to pay attention and try to figure out what it's communicating to both you and I. Um, da, 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 just looking for other requests out here. I don't see them. I think we've taken care of everything inside the Tiger's Den uh, real quickly as long as my uh, – nope, that's not where the charts are at. Uh, let's go back and take – just as we go into this uh, last break that we have out here, let's go back and take a look at uh, – 
those equity future contract charts, the short-term time frame charts. So let me just change screens right here just to get an update on what's going on as we come into that uh, 2 o'clock witching hour out here. So we've got the 30-minute charts out. Uh, what kind of signals do we have out here? Looks like Stevie's got to populate it. Um, so no TD9 count. That got uh, voided. That got validated at the 130. So that's not a pattern that's in play out here. Not in play in the NQ either. Just the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're going to finish out the uh, session, uh, likely uh, just taking a look at the 30-minute uh, uh, time frame charge or at least the next minute or so as we go into the close. And the reason that we're doing that is because of the uh, one-day rate of change that is currently present in the spot volatility index. Right now, even though you can't see it on the chart, I can tell you it's up by 23.67%. If there's a one-day rate of change above plus 10%, especially if you're an intraday trader out here. I don't care whether you're short the market. What I want you to prepare for is some type of uh, bounce, and it could very much be a tradable bounce that would be out there. So what are we looking for? Well, what we're really looking for is what we saw inside the NQ out here. You'd like to see it happen with all four. The pattern is only present right now inside of the NQ, and that's the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. That's the best signal 
uh, for a uh, bounce or a bounce with uh, significance. Why? Because when a market gets so stretched that the rubber band has to snap back. Are we going to get that? I don't know whether we're going to get it. I know what to be watching for. This is what you'd like to see as a pattern inside of all four equity future contracts. So for me, when I'm trading, especially when it's uh, late in the evening and early morning, when I'm likely to sleep, uh, is uh, I'm looking for confirmation from all four. Those always produce the best. Now, if you can get three out of four, okay, uh, that's better than two out of four. Uh, but preferably, you'd like to see that type of pattern occur in each of them. Well, when we started the show, we had TD9 counts that were present. But remember, only bar eight had formed, and uh, that bar simply violated the pattern. So we do not have a TD9 count bottom inside the ES mini, nor, we have, nor, nor do we have it inside the Russell 2000. It is still valid and applicable inside of the Dow, but, you know, two out of four to generate bottom signals, that's not really what it is that you're looking for. You're looking for all four of them to generate some nice bottom signals uh, that might not take place until, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night out there, but that's what you should be looking for. If you don't get those bottom signals, then it may be a signal that this one day rate of change above 10% is gonna work tomorrow. The 30 minute charts or the intraday charts will show bottom signals if there's going to be a bounce out there. And that's what you should pay attention to. Folks, stay tuned for two more fabulous hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next with the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks.